Hi, and welcome to my 139 landing gear simulation, which I've created using Excel with VBA. So like my other uh, simulations that I've created and you may have seen on my channel, uh, when we click into the simulation itself, we see a simplified hydraulic schematic for the undercarriage system, showing the nose leg, the main leg, and the partial retraction jack. Uh, like my other presentations, if we click on this little information link, it will bring up um, hyperlinks to various components, such as the reset button and the access panel through which you'll um, you can uh, service the undercarriage once the undercarriage has been lowered using the emergency. Here we've got a picture of the nose leg with the down lock switch and up lock switch positions. And then these two links here show us the main undercarriage leg with the retraction jack and the shortening jack and uh, shock absorber. Uh, I think it is a little bit busy. I'm probably going to thin it out a little bit and make it into two drawings. So we can clear the picture up a little bit by clicking on this again and the picture goes away or the, the icons go away. So we can raise and lower the undercarriage by using the undercarriage select lever on the panel here. And if we just click on that, it will run through the system automatically, um, showing where the signals are coming from, showing the uh, components moving. Um, and as you can see here, it runs through automatically uh, until the undercarriage is selected up. Now, the only thing I have done, which is slightly different, is the nose jack here and the main jack, they would normally move at the same time, but because of coding issues, and also when you're teaching, it's sometimes easier to make it run um, in that format, and so you can show one moving and then the other. Um, I've done it as a, as a single thing. Down the side here, we've got some buttons, so the green button turns hides on, uh, the red button turns hides off, and as you can see, if we turn the hydraulic power off, we've lost the hide two supply here, although you can still see hide one and hide one return at the top. Below that, um, we've got a valve fail. So if we select that and then select undercarriage down, one of the valves will fail and then we would have to lower the undercarriage using the emergency system. On the panel here, as I said, we've got the undercarriage select lever. Okay, and next to that, oh, I need to turn the hydraulics back on. Uh, next to that, we've got um, the emergency switch. Okay, and you can see from the icons changed to a finger there, so we can actually press on that. And then down the side here, we've got some buttons which allow us to run through the schematic and run through the process of the gear going up or down or in an emergency um, in a slower time fashion with break points built into it so that you can discuss it for teaching purposes. And then at the very bottom here, we've got a um, help button which just takes us to this page which just tells us what some of the things do and what you can access by clicking on various buttons. Okay, so I, I've inadvertently run through up and down on the undercarriage. Okay, so I'll wrap, uh, what I'll do now is just show you the up slow process. Okay, um, it does use the Excel um, VBA sp speech synthesizer which is a little bit robotic and when messages come up they can only come up in the center of the screen. I'm, I'm, I've worked around it on some bits and bobs but it does make a, a quite convenient place for you to stop and talk um, and good discussion points. Um, the other thing I quite often do is I turn the hydraulics off because then as it runs through you will see the pressure and return lines fill as we're going through that part of the thing. Obviously I do need to turn hydraulics back on. So we're now undercarriage is down, we've got three greens, so we're going to select undercarriage up slow. Once the aircraft is off the ground, the weight off wheel switch, wow switch, energizes the solenoid releasing the undercarriage lever. So this is the message box that I was talking about. Now you can move it around the screen, but nothing will happen until you press OK. The pilot moves the lever to the up position. This sends a signal to valve 1 in the landing gear control module. Okay, so the lever is going to move to the up position and then we're going to get a signal come here to valve 1. There's the signal. Oil pressure releases the mechanical lock 
and the partial retraction jack raises the main landing gear trailing arm. Okay, so we've seen the valve move, the lock's been released, and as it started to move, we've got a red caption because the up lock has broken. Once the partial retraction jack is fully extended, a micro switch sends a signal to initiate the second stage. Okay, so we saw there that when the jack was fully extended and the training arm was up, the micro switch sends a signal back to the panel and then that will now signal the number two valve to allow the legs to retract the undercarriage into the aircraft. So there's the signal to valve two. The main and nose leg retraction jacks operate at the same time. However, for the purpose of the simulation, we have made them separate movements. Okay, so that's just reiterating and just reminding you that these are going, in reality, these would move at the same time. Oil pressure releases the mechanical locks, and the retraction jacks stow the undercarriage into the fuse large. Okay, so there we can see the jack moving. Once it's up, we'll get a signal from the micro switch, and that will turn the red lights off because it's not moving anymore. Same with the nose leg. When the nose leg reaches the up position, we'll get a signal. Red lights go out, undercarriage is fully retracted. <clears throat> now I said that um, the down, up and down uh, are basically the same, and it does the same sort of thing with regards to uh, t uh, t teaching points and, and places to stop and discuss it. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to run through one of the failures. Uh, we'll do the valve 2 failure. Okay, so if we click on that, the pilot selects undercarriage down by moving the lever to the down position. Okay, so if he moves it to the down position, what should happen? If the landing gear fails to extend, the pilot must check the airspeed is below 120 knots, check the hydraulic utility pressure and try to select down a further three times before selecting emergency down. Okay, so we signaled valve 2, nothing happened. Okay, the undercarriage hasn't come down. The pilot will carry out some checks and try and select it down a couple of more times. Failing that, what he will do is he will click on the emergency button here. Now we can click on that and it will just run through it, but we'll click on the emergency slow and it will run through it and you can see how it breaks it down so you can teach it. Losing number two hydraulics is one instance, but there are other circumstances when the emergency system would be used. Consult the rotor flight manual for more information. Yeah, so if we lost number two hydraulics, yes, it would stop the undercarriage coming down, but also if one of the valves fails as well. The emergency system can be operated with the lever in the up or down position. The only electrical signal used in the emergency system operates the control valve solenoid. Okay, so there's the signal to the control valve solenoid. Number one hydraulic pressure is supplied to the nose and main leg extension jacks via sequence valves. A separate sequence valve prevents flow to the partial retraction jack. As with the other simulations, the nose and main leg extension is shown as separate movements. So we can see we've got number one hydraulic pressure coming down here and it's coming up and it's reaching the sequence valve for the nose leg and it's reaching the sequence valve for the main leg. This sequence valve up here is preventing hydraulic pressure coming down this line and acting on the partial retraction jack uh, sequence valve because we want that to move after the leg has been extended out of the undercarriage bay. Number one hydraulic pressure forces the nose leg sequence valve to move. This allows number one hydraulic pressure to extend the nose leg jack. Once extended the micro switch will signal the control panel when the leg is locked. Simultaneously number one hydraulic pressure forces the main leg sequence valve to move. This allows number one hydraulic pressure to extend the main leg jack. Once the main leg is extended, number one hydraulic pressure will increase on the stage two sequence valve. With number one hydraulic pressure flowing through the stage two sequence valve, it will act on the partial retraction jack valve.
Number 1 Hydraulic pressure flows through the valve, retracting the jack and lowering the trailing arm. Once locked, the partial retraction jack will signal the control panel. Okay, so there's the undercarriage lowered using the emergency system. Here's the secondary, uh, secondary second stage sequence valve, and you can see now pressure's going through that, and it allows it to act on the partial retraction jack sequence valve, retracting that and lowering the training arm. Okay, so the last thing to do is that you can't operate the undercarriage, yeah, because we haven't reset the system. It's a manual thing, so the pilot can't do that. So what we need to do is click on the button here. Okay, that resets the valve, and we would obviously hopefully have hydraulic 2 back and we're back for another retraction when the pilot takes off again okay i hope you enjoyed that it's one of the a series of um, videos that i've created using my simulations i've designed for teaching in 139 and um, please check out the rest of them on my channel and subscribe if you think that they're, they're worthwhile thanks again for watching goodbye